In this video I'm going to look at hydrogen bonds. So we'll start off with the fact that hydrogen bonds are the strongest type of intermolecular force and the three intermolecular forces that we need to know about are hydrogen bonds, permanent dipole, permanent dipole and van der Waals. And you can see there there's the order of strength. Hydrogen bonds are stronger than permanent dipole, permanent dipole which are in turn stronger than van der Waals. We'll just keep things simple. Hydrogen bonds are just very strong permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular forces. Now the rule for a, one of these intermolecular forces to be classed as a hydrogen bond, you obviously must have a hydrogen in the molecule, but that hydrogen, if it's directly bonded to a fluorine or an oxygen or a nitrogen, then you can call the intermolecular force that forms between the molecules hydrogen bonds. If you know your electronegativity values, or some of them, you'll know that fluorine is the most electronegative, oxygen second, and nitrogen's third. So it's just a very strong permanent dipole, permanent dipole force um, between molecules with HF in it, HO in it, or HN in it. So we'll start with the simplest um, example of hydrogen bonds, and that would be between HF molecules. So if we think about fluorine, most electronegative element, so we've got the delta minus on the F, delta plus on the H. These are, this is a permanent dipole in the molecule. Same on this one. And the intermolecular force is obviously between the H, the delta positive H on one molecule, and the delta negative F on the other molecule. Now when you draw hydrogen bonds, I'll just label that up now, when you draw hydrogen bonds the examiner is actually looking for three things in your answer. They're looking for the dipole, they're looking for the hydrogen bond labelled up obviously, but they also want you to draw the electrons around the electronegative atom. I've put the, all seven in there for the fluorine and the hydrogen one as well. But what they want to see is this hydrogen bond coming from a lone pair. So we've got three lone pairs around this F, haven't we? We're just going to draw the, the hydrogen bond between the lone pair, one of the lone pairs on the F, and obviously the hydrogen delta positive on the neighbouring molecule. So the classic example for an NH in the molecule, NH bond in the molecule is ammonia. So we've got two ammonia molecules got the lone pair shown on the nitrogen. Remember it's got five outer electrons, three are used to bond to these three hydrogens. So we'll just pop the dipoles on. Nitrogen is the more electronegative atom, so we'll just put that one there and that one there. We've got the lone pair on, so we'll just put the hydrogen bond. Remember it's got to go from there. So they're labelled up hydrogen bond. And obviously the classic example with an OH bond is water. So let's put the dipole on, delta minus on the oxygen, delta plus on the hydrogens. And lone pairs now. So there's the two on that oxygen. There's the two on that oxygen. So we've scored two marks so far. And then obviously we need to draw the hydrogen bond from the hydrogen on one water molecule to the lone pair on the oxygen of a neighbouring molecule and then label it up H bond. Now because hydrogen bonds are quite strong in the molecular forces they tend to give molecules that contain them unusual properties or another word for that is anomalous properties. So we'll look at water it has three unusual or anomalous properties. So the first one is it has an unusually high boiling point or a higher boiling point than expected. You can't just say water's got a high boiling point, you have to say it's higher than expected. So very simply, if you, there's two water molecules drawn up to overcome the attraction between the molecules, so in other words, to overcome that strong hydrogen bond and turn it into a gas, we've got to put in more energy than you would expect. 
and so that's going to raise the boiling point of the water as a result. So as a point of comparison, hydrogen sulfide, you see I've written there, H2S is a gas at room temperature and pressure. H2S has a much higher MR than water. It's a very similar molecule because it contains two hydrogens and a group six member. Um, but because it hasn't got hydrogen bonding between its molecules, it has a lower boiling point, so low that it's actually a gas at room temperature and pressure. So I hope you didn't make up my scribble in the corner there. There's two hydrogen sulfide molecules, but because we haven't got an H bonded to an F, an O or an N, we can't call these hydrogen bonds. They're permanent dipole, permanent dipole forces, which are weaker than hydrogen bonds, and so it's easier to turn this into a gas, and as a result, it is a gas at room temperature and pressure. The second anomalous property of water is that it has surface tension. So again, I'll just use the same diagram here. So if you imagine um, a very sort of small insect, like something like a pond skater or something like that, the water molecules are held together by these hydrogen bonds to such an extent that these creatures can actually walk on the water. So these water molecules aren't just drifting apart really easily. There's, there's a force, decent force holding them together and so these creatures can actually walk on the water and it um, gives it this surface tension property. The third and final anomalous property of water is that ice is less dense than water. So in other words, ice floats on water and that's because when ice forms, the hydrogen bonds, once you get past or below four degrees Celsius, water has actually reached its maximum density and the hydrogen bonds start to extend and the water molecules are actually forced further apart. So the volume begins to increase in the water. Obviously its mass stays the same. So if you take 10 grams of water and freeze it, You've still got 10 grams of water, you don't lose any of the mass, but the volume increases because it forms what's known as an open lattice. So it gets an open lattice structure with a greater volume than the 10 grams of water had to start with, and so its density um, decreases. And so ice is less dense than water and that's why it floats. So we'll finish with this little task. We've got three molecules with two carbons in each, three organic molecules. So we've got ethane, ethanol and chloroethane. And what would the intermolecular forces be between ethane molecules, ethanol molecules, chloroethane molecules? So the first thing we have to establish is, is are the molecules polar or non-polar? So we'll look at ethane first. This is a non-polar molecule. Ethanol, well because of this OH at this end it's going to be polar. And the chloroethane, again because of the chlorine it's break, breaking the symmetry of the molecule. This is polar as well. So what kind of intermolecular forces do we have between non-polar molecules? There's only one answer, that's van der Waals. So they're the weakest intermolecular forces. Right, our options with polar molecules can either be permanent dipole, permanent dipole, or it can be hydrogen bonding. So we need to look at the rule for hydrogen bonding. We need an H directly bonded to an F, an O, or an N. Well, you can see we've got an H directly bonded to an O, and so this will have hydrogen bonding. Now, earlier on in the video, I was just writing H bonds, so I wouldn't do that in the exam. I would definitely write the full word hydrogen bonding. You don't want to get on the wrong side of the exam, do you? We haven't got this scenario in this molecule, so this would be permanent dipole, and again, write this in full. Don't abbreviate it like me. PD, PD. Permanent dipole, permanent dipole. So these molecules would have the strongest intermolecular forces between them, and these would be the weakest.
and obviously they're somewhere in between.